Eric Cantor may be an unrepentant partisan and perpetual opponent of the president, but he's no conservative, at least not according to Heritage Action, the group, an offshoot of a very influential conservative think tank, grades conservatives on their purity by a number of issues, and they definitely don't grade on a curve. For instance, their average score for House Republicans, 66%, Eric Cantor, a mere 55%. So, how do you earn a top grade with Heritage Action? Well, let South Carolina's Jeff Duncan demonstrate. Madam Secretary, you let the consulate become a death trap. And that's national security malpractice. Joining us now is Clarence Page, a columnist with the Chicago Tribune, and NBC's Luke Russett, who's live for us on Capitol Hill. Welcome to you both. Clarence, uh, what hope is there for gun control, immigration, climate change, if true conservatives have to be to the right of Eric Cantor? Well, not a lot of hope, you would think. Uh, it's a real problem for those who want to get any kind of progressive action uh, through at all uh, or any kind of compromise. Uh, there are very few people left in the House, uh, especially on the Republican side, uh, who feel uh, obliged to their constituency. As far as their views are concerned, they feel more obliged to the folks who are funding their campaigns or funding the campaigns of their potential opponents in a future primary fight. Uh, so it's gotten to be a very cynical politics that I'm afraid Heritage has become p a part of, moving from being a research institution into being a lobbying force. And I'm assuming, Clarence, that you include Heritage alongside with the NRA and others, yes? Well, that's uh, sort of the NRA uh, has become an organization whose members, whose members are gun owners, but the money comes from the gun industry. Right. Uh, Heritage isn't quite there yet, but uh, they do get a lot of contributions from people, from corporations that benefit from their work. Okay, now Luke, the Gang of Eight's Mike Lee, who owns a 99% score from Heritage, won't now back the group's immigration plan. Last year, we saw Heritage threaten to score an amendment banning high-capacity clips. What makes grading systems like this one so powerful? Well, I think primarily is that if you fail to get a good grade with Heritage Action, you are essentially a target uh, for a primary. Uh, if you look at the, the way they do this, it's a very effective grading system in terms of really trying to appeal to conservative media and to conservative grassroots activists. You can say that someone like maybe not an Eric Cantor, but someone that is in more of a, a district where he doesn't have the financial backing that Eric Cantor might have, oh my God, they're only with us 55% of the time. They're not pure. They're not true. And we've seen, especially in primaries uh, in the United States Senate, look at folks like Todd Aiken, look at like, folks like Todd, uh, uh, Todd Murdoch in Indiana, uh, Christine O'Donnell in, uh, in Delaware. You sort of seeing the strength of that grassroots. That's why these grading systems are so effective, because they put somebody on a target list for grassroots conservative uh, organizations to take out in a primary. And in the, if you go to their website, it's very slick, it's very well done, sure. very easy to click on somebody. You can see six or seven votes. And the way in which they penalize people uh, for a vote that ordinarily would just be a common thing to take, for example, something that might not be completely offset. Well, let's say you're from a coastal area and you're supporting something, uh, some government monies that could go there for rebuilding if you get hit with a storm. Well, that doesn't align. Sorry if you're from Louisiana. Sorry if you're from Florida. Eh, gun. You got down. So you might be the most conservative person of all time, but because you voted to help out your district, you're going to get an X right there. It's really well, quite remarkable. It's absolutely incredible. Clarence, Heritage action is what's known as a social welfare organization. That means it can and has spent money on races. So what happens if you don't have the money, as, as Luke was saying, of an Eric Cantor, and you incur the anger of heritage because, say for example, you think high capacity clips and assault weapons are not okay. What happens then? Well, you can, there are a number of things you can do as a, as a candidate or, or as an incumbent. Uh, one of them is to get yourself on TV like you just did with that uh, congressman from uh, South Carolina. Uh, Washington Post calls it a, a, a money blurt uh, where you yell, uh, you lie in the middle of the president's uh, address to Congress or uh, say something else outrageous like uh, uh, Michelle Bachman and uh, other folks are known for. Every time they make headlines, they get contributions because we're in the internet age now where all you got to do is go on the web and click to make a contribution. Uh, and so there is a certain uh, benefit not just to voting in the extreme but also to talking in the extreme. 
And there was me stupidly believing that it was all about responding to your constituents. Clearly not. Clarence Everything. Page and NBC's Luke Russett. Gentlemen, thank you.